having an opportunity to share with you about the things that uh, define life and the things that make us who we are. Uh, the Bible says, whenever two shall touch and agree concerning anything here on earth, it shall be done by He, <clears throat> the Creator of the heavens and the earth. I do uh, pray that in this moment we are given the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding, to understand some of the things that we are going to share with you. I'm not here to share with you knowledge. For most of us and all of us here are extremely, extremely knowledgeable. The most important thing in life is not knowledge. The most important thing in life is understanding. For if you fail to understand what you know, you always live an average life. So I'm not here to share with you because I'm the best in this country or in the world. I'm, share, I'm here to share with you because there is something I understood that I always, I, I always knew. I took the initiative to understand it and that is the reason why I'm here. It is not an accident that I'm here in Centenary Bank because there are thousands or hundreds of other people outside there who can do what I do. But the question is, how did I come to be here? The things that helped me to be here are the things that I'm going to share with you. So I want you to give me your attention. Make sure you don't feel hungry. For since the beginning of the year, we eat. We never miss lunch, dinner, then breakfast. Which means from January 1st to December 31st, people are eating. But when do we give food to that something that never eats? That is the mind. And yet it is something that makes us different. The Bible says, I love Proverbs 4.8. If you're Muslim, you'll forgive me, but these are just quotes. If you prize wisdom, she will make you great. And if you embrace her, she will honor you. When God asked Solomon, what do you want? Of course, he was not working in Centenary Bank. He would have asked for a loan, an advance loan. I'm joking. But he was another man who asked for knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Some people think that all knowledgeable people do understand. And others think that those that understand are extremely knowledgeable, which is wrong. He asked for those things in their chronological order. Knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. But the Bible says understanding is the superior one. Because when you understand something and you do it the way you're supposed to do it, you graduate to the level of wisdom. That is when people are able to judge and say, he's intelligent, he's wise. I know that most of us here, five years or ten years from now, we won't be in Sentinel Bank. The hardest thing for all employees, for all human beings that do have an opportunity somewhere, they refuse to accept that one day everything shall come to an end. Even right now, the world is struggling because of people who don't think that one day all of us shall come to an end. If we knew that there would be a time when we are in those small boxes surrounded by people who don't know who we were and what we did, we would think twice, especially every day that we live. I want to begin by telling you that every day that you breathe or you wake up is an opportunity for you because you don't know what can happen tomorrow. So the only opportunity you have are the decisions and the choices you make in today. And tomorrow belongs to only those who are prepared for it. If you're not prepared for tomorrow, it is not yours. I've just received a message from one of the people that enjoy my presentations. He says, good morning, I'm Tasaga Benjamin, 
uh, and a good follow of your programs. I have an issue here. I don't know if you can help me. I've been denied the US visa twice due to financial constraints and was told I'm not eligible yet. I work uh, as a mobile money agent earning 300k a month. I look after my retired mother and myself. I had plans in place already, but now I'm at zero. After spending all the money, he's taking care of his retired mother. People retire. That is the formal way of believing that people retire. I hate the word retirement because it doesn't exist. It was just evoked by humans. But you've all heard of a saying that once a soldier, always a soldier, and once a teacher, always a teacher. A soldier dies a soldier, a teacher dies a teacher. Why? You have never found an, an avocado tree that is in retirement. The only time an avocado tree goes into retirement is when it has been cut down. The only time we go into retirement is when we are in those boxes. That is the only time you have to retire. I do believe that most of you here, with your experience in banking, you would become consultants. But you can't become a consultant unless that was your choice. Unless you prepared for that. But if you wait for that later, and that small money, I call it small money, because without a plan, it is as useless as anything you can imagine. Because the only thing it can do is you eat, you sustain your family for a short period of time, and now, and then you begin to rely on your children. You have put a lot of burden on your children. I see young boys and girls in Kampala thinking, working as if someone sent them to Kampala to get money. That is why even their marriages are failing, why girls can't give attention to their new family, Boys can't give attention to their new families. Why they have to work for their parents? It's not an obligation of your child to take care of you. No. In fact, it is your obligation to take care of your child for as long as you're still breathing. That is why when we get problems at the end, we go back to our parents, irrespective of how old they are. Expecting assistance, expecting guidance, and expecting favor from them so you should not plan your retirement thinking that your children that you've taken to school and connected to Centenary Bank are going to give you their let me tell you they have a long journey to walk and they have to prepare for their lives too because if they don't our can our world that we are going to live in the next 20 years is extremely hard so you need to prepare yourselves i know most of your parents you need to prepare yourselves don't lift your burdens and put them on your children there won't be anything so we are going to look at not retirement but life after centenary bank but in this life after centenary bank i'm going to focus so much on the meaning of life Right now, as we are talking, someone else is losing their bread. As we are talking right now, some other people are dying. The question I have to ask you is, why are you still alive? The greatest tragedy in life is having life and not know why. Waking up every day, coming to Centenary Bank, sit on your desk, supervise those that you supervise. The day ends, you program yourself, you you update your books and go home monday to, to saturday january to december year one year two year three i mean what are you up to Senior bank is not yours even if mr fabian was here it is not his bank a time will come and you'll have to go i don't care who you are how connected you are that time shall surely come so the earlier you accept, the earlier you accept that, the earlier you begin to plan for your exit. I always tell people that the moment I'm given an entrance or showed, showed an entrance, 
before I take my seat, I first look for my career. That has been my challenge in all my employment places. The damn given the job is that I begin to find out how, how I'm going to move out. Because I hate frustrations and disappointment. So one of my bosses, long time ago in 2008, after my first degree, in 2008 after my first degree, Wins a development consultant. It's a consultancy firm for the uh, British people, but they have a branch here. I applied to the job. They gave me the job. Then in two weeks, I had applied to another. Unfortunately, I forgot. I put him as a reference on my vision. Then he summoned me in his office and told me, Simon, you've not been here for two weeks, but someone is contacting me to tell them about you. But I was honest enough to tell him that I had disappointment. That is why I prepare for my exit before I settle in. That has always been my policy until when I found myself. On my CV, I've never worked in a place for more than a year, which is bad. It is bad. It is bad. Why? Yeah, it is too bad. But it is extremely good because I didn't know why. My spirit has, 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 had never settled. That is the reason why. Whenever I could get an opportunity, my spirit forces me to look for another. I didn't know why until when I realized that I had to do my own work. What gives me uh, comfort is getting 100,000 shillings when it is my own effort than getting 2.5 million shillings when 95% of my time is controlled by someone else. I resolved in 2009 that I want to work with everyone and I hate working for anyone. I'll only work for myself. But I can work with. If they invite me in Centenary Bank, for a week, for a month, I can come. But I don't want them to control me from morning to evening because I'll disobey them or they'll want me on my desk when I'm out and they'll expel me. So to avoid that and disturbing people, I decided to find a place where, where they can accommodate my character. Go do what I'm supposed to do there. I live and go do my work. I work with the office of the Royal Treasury. You know that? Office of the Royal Treasury, Buganda Kingdom. I go do my work there. And they don't have any problem with me as long as I give them results, especially in what they expect of me. So I go do it. Right now I'm, say, I'm a centenary bank and they can't say where are you. That is what I love. So everything else comes to an end and we must know that every beginning signifies an end and, as, and every end signifies a beginning. Life as Centenary Bank may end, but that is the beginning of a new chapter. They tell us that the greatest, the two most important days in life are the day, the day you're born and the day you find out why. It is unfortunate that by the time some people find out why they were born, I won't say it. Isaiah 46 10 declaring the end from the beginning. Uh, I've started from the scriptures because they are the source of almost everything, all books that we read and every knowledge that we have. My creator says he knew my beginning before my, my he knew my end before my beginning. So meaning that this man, I don't know where he is. He stood at the beginning of my journey, walked that journey up to the end, then came back to the beginning and asked his colleagues, I don't know who he was with, asked them who is going to move, walk this journey. Then they decided that a man called Simon, saying, hi, will walk the journey. Then my mother, all the way from far, met my father here, and out of the 500 million sperm that are released during ejaculation, 
only one was able to hit the egg. And that was me. I'd not come here to do anything new, but to complete what was already finished. My task on earth was to find out what I'd come here to do. But some people think their jobs, or their jobs, or their job is their work. You're going to see a difference as to why. So I want to ask you a question, what is your purpose? And in our presentations, we don't give knowledge. We focus on understanding what we know. So what is your purpose? Why are you still alive? Why were you born? Why were you created? Those are the questions that are asked every day. Why do you wake up every day? Why do you breathe? Why do you still have that breath in your lungs? Is it for a job, a salary? Is it enough, really, for someone to grow up, get children, get old, die, be buried? No. Fish was created to swim. Bird was created to fly. And I've never found a mass being prepared to pray for the fish in the water to swim properly. Why? As long as the fish is in water, the right environment, they don't need prayers. Because everything that it needs to survive was hidden inside of it. So fish doesn't need prayers to swim. In fact, when fish is swimming, it is praying. Yes, it is fulfilling its purpose of creation. When you fulfill your purpose of creation, that means you're praying. Praying from January to December 31st cannot change anything until when you find out that thing that God gave you to use as your prayer or as a blessing to other people. You've heard of Moses who led the children of Israel from Egypt. As, as they were going, they came across a river. They could not cross. He, he also got confused. They started abusing him. We are slaves the other side, but we are not going to die like rats here. From his confusion, he went back to God and said, What can I do? God didn't tell him what to do, read it properly. He first asked him a question. What is in your hand? That's when he said, I have a maze. Call it a stick, call it anything you want. Then he told him, use that maze three times on the river and I'll create the way. That is when God opened the way. The simple question was, who opened the way? Moses thought he did. That is why he never reached the promised land. He started bragging around, I mean, he has power. But there is a saying that says, it seems man cannot without God, but God will not without man. It seems man cannot without God, but God will not without man. Why? Because in the beginning he said, let them have dominion over us. He never said, let us have dominion. He excluded himself, giving all the power to a spirit that has a body. That is why even Satan wanted to come to earth, he had to find a body. That is why even when God wanted to fight Satan on earth, he had to find a body. That is logic. A spirit that has no body, it is illegal here, you know that. It is illegal. The most powerful thing on earth is a spirit that has a body. Let them have dominion. It means all power, all power, to make this planet what it ought to be is in our hands. God is like someone who is, uh, who is in captive there waiting for us to act in order to bless. So like, like Moses, I want to ask you a question. What is that thing that you want God to bless? What is your mess? Have you found your mess? Professionally, I'm supposed to be a teacher, an economics teacher, professional. But my calling is different. I was called to help people find and tap into who they are to make this world a better place. 
and the world was, was designed in the way that to get what you want you must give what you have man has tried to change that uh, to that law that is why you see so many young people today and even people in government even in institutions like this wanting to have or wanting to get without giving that is the source of all problems people wanting to get money without working which means they want free things to have what you want you must give what you have that is why for you to get a salary here you must offer your presence your time and your effort the moment or the day you stop doing that that is the day you stop getting a salary so what are you going to give after seminary bank what are you going to give so in our presentations this is what we do as i've told you my intention is to inspire you build a house one you can live in after your service here at Centenary Bank. How do we build a house? We enlighten your understanding, please your imagination, move your passion and influence your will. If I'm able to enlighten your understanding, to help ourselves understand what we already know, then we'll be able to go to the next phase of creating images in your mind. And when I'm able to create images in your mind, something will arise inside of you, that is passion, the desire to do something. And when that desire comes, it will influence your will. This is where the saying that don't give a man fish comes from. It is better for someone to understand than to keep giving to keep on giving them knowledge. You send your children to universities in Uganda. I mean that is where they're supposed to be because that is where our effort is. They are only getting knowledge. But they never give them understanding. Universities don't give us understanding. They give us a lot of knowledge that sometimes we even don't know why. That is why most of you are asking yourselves why did you study all those subjects in high school? Because they have not helped you in your life. Why? Because the education doesn't help to find the people. It only gives them what it thinks they're supposed to be given. That is why when you take your child to university and they get a degree, make sure you expose them to get understanding, to understand what they studied. In the days of our forefathers, in the days of your days, education used to be defined as an investment in human capital. Today, education is what remains in your head after forgetting everything you're taught in class. Sometimes it becomes hard to find, to fight the system that has made you who you are. Unless you step out of the system, look at the system critically from a distance, you're able to see and understand the system, then you can know where you, your entry point is to influence the system. So in whatever you're searching for, let me tell you, I don't look for money. I mean, look at my age, I need money. Like so many other young people. But I don't run after money. Why? I cannot have money that Mr. Fabian has. Look at his age. He has gone through a process to become who he is. I must go through a process. You, there no, life has no shortcuts. The more you take shortcuts, you lose a few things. That is why it is bad for a child to skip a class and to skip a certain age. You didn't clap when you're in high school. Those are the people you find in their 50s clubbing to them. They never leave clubs. Why? They missed it. So if we are able to enlighten your understanding, please, your imagination, we we'll live here when your passion is high, and when your passion is high, your will will begin to move. Like I said, 
it is not enough to know when and to remember when you're born, but why you're born. You were never born to be in Centenary Bank. It's a shock. He was not born to be an MD of Centenary Bank. Life is like a mango tree that has mangoes. But they are so high and you can't reach them. What you do, you get a rudder or a platform like this one. You step on the platform to pick the mango. After picking the mango, the platform has no value. How many of you after picking what you want remember that you use the platform? Some even forget to take it back where they got it from. Why? Because their intention was the mango. Your position in Centenary Bank is simply a platform, a platform for you to become the person you were created to be and to deliver what you were created to deliver on earth. If you don't differentiate between your job and your work, you're going to live an average life on earth and you will die in an average world. Apart from your family and friends, no one will recognize your death. Greatness is a result of every life you touch. That is where your legacy is. Legacy is from every life you touch. That is why in simple or in brief, greatness is a product of influence. You can't be great unless you're influential. Influence is a product of significance. You can't be influential unless you're significant. Significance is a product of value. To be significant, you must have value. Value is a product of refinement. You must have found something and concentrated on it and worked on it to perfect it. Remember, talent is given naturally, but skill is perfected by hours and hours of practicing the craft. That is what gives you value. Value is a product of refinement. Refinement is a product of uniqueness. Uniqueness is a product of a gift, and the gift is given by God. People in Uganda that have money, but when they tell you they are passing by, no one bothers to look. And then there are some young people who simply have gifts. The unconsumers, the bobby wines. They don't have that much money. But people give them attention. They don't give them attention because they are unique or they are different from others. They give them attention because they have a gift. And it's a gift that makes you great. Why? Because the only thing that you give back to other people, to your nature, to the environment around you, is what makes your life relevant. That's why most of you have heard of a saying that saying life is not about getting, but giving. You make a living by what you get and you make a life by what you give. That's why when people get money, they look for ways of giving it back. They join Rotary, they join associations, they join community, best initiatives, they go back to their churches. Why? It is not, honestly speaking, it is not that they want to give so much. But they want to feel their lives are relevant to other people. That is the deepest desire for all humanity. Self-actualization. There's a time to make money and a time to want other people to recognize your presence. But you don't force it. You don't buy it. You don't pay for it. That's why in leadership we say the leader uh, doesn't seek followers. Followers are attracted to the leader because of their gift, because of their character. We have a live example of which Tiba Charles Peter Maize. When that man speaks, I mean, everyone who is seated there doesn't want him to end. So people follow a gift, they don't follow. And when he concentrates on who he is, then the actual gift. He can lose it. So what is the difference between your job and your work? The job is something you're paid to do. Work is something you're born to do. You can retire from your job, but you can't retire from your work. You can lose your job, but you can't lose your work. At your job, you're the master of your superior. At your work, you're, you're the master of your decisions and choices. At your job, you need qualifications. At your work, you 
just need to find out what you're supposed to do. Job is man-made, work is God created. In your job, at your job, you just need self-belief. I mean, to be here, I just needed to believe in myself. Before I tell you who I am, or before you even listen to what I have to give you, the first thing I step before you is ask, you ask yourself, what is he going to tell us? I mean, look at his age. But that's not what is important. In fact, I'm not going to share anything that I'm studying. That is why I told you understanding is better than knowledge. Sometimes they say knowledge is power, but only when you understand what you know. Knowledge is not power when you're ignorant about it. There is a young man in Mengo. The guy stopped in primary two. He was living in Bamnanika, that is well. His father died, left the babies with the mother, and the mother could not take them any further. So the uncle decided to pick one of the boys to come along with, with them in Kampala. Because the father, the father was a mechanic, wanted to train the boy to learn. At the age of 14, the boy knew how to work on a Toyota vehicle. He's now 22. One day, a guy got a problem along Buckley. They were looking for a mechanic to help. The guy was driving a new Toyota double cabin. Then they called this boy because everyone around that place knows that he's very flexible and genuine. The boy came, asked the guy, what is the problem? He said, my car cannot start. Somehow, somewhere, asked him to open the bonnet, open the bonnet, looked into the car, then asked him, to start again, then the car started, and the guy got shocked. He didn't know what the boy had done. Then he went. He never paid him, he never even appreciated him. He went. The boy didn't know what the guy had told. Then after two weeks, he took his number, but he gave him a call. Do you remember me? You, you helped me on my car. Said, yes, I remember. Do you want to start them more? He said, yes, if there's an opportunity. The guy was working in Toyota. Took the boy from the garage, took him to Toyota, Uganda. The boy was trained for 12 months. Then he came back and they started their own garage in Mengo. I have a neighbor, I used to stay in Kisubi. I have a neighbor. I had a neighbor who was Sometimes I even fear to say he was a doctor. He had a doctorate. He had a brand new TX in 2009. Prado TX. I had a very old car, small old car. But it could move me from one, from one place to another. And, and I mean, it could not rain. The rains could not rain on me. For as long as it could move, I was confident and okay with it. One day I woke up in the morning, the guy was putting on his suits and was confused. I never bothered him that much because I was renting, he had a house so that he had constructed his own house. I was renting. But we used to chat on weekends, we used to chat, find ourselves at the washing bays and the chat, what do you do, something like that. Then he was able to open up and say, Simon, do you know what? You know I have a problem. My car has failed to start. And I also left mine, went inside. Hi, it's your new, brand new TX. Three months he had been driving it. Starting it two times, it refused. I thought maybe I could do something uh, like a mirror and it starts. It failed. But, the, but then he said, I have a lecture. Could you drop me? I accepted. The way he sat in my car, like he positioned himself in one place and he could not even lean because my car wasn't that good. But I said, okay, even if you don't, you're, you're inside. <laughs> Drove him up to Makere, uh, dropped him. But on the way, as we were coming, I told him about Joffrey. 
that is my mechanic he's been able to keep my old car in shape i mean it moves i never find problems he said what did he study he was a doctor i mean he had to ask for books i told him to be to, to disappoint you the guy stopped in p2 but he was trained in toyota to motivate him i motivated him by telling him he was trained in toyota uganda oh i'll consult my mechanics but then i told him no you should try someone else he said okay we shall see then at around three he gave me a call that could you please connect me to the boy i called joffrey picked us from mango we went together with his toolbox on reaching the vehicle uh, he had told he had already told him the problem joffrey started the car once and it failed and he shook his head he even smiled you know when you understand you know that pride you have when you understand something that's why the bible says the truth shall set them free when you have the truth when you know the truth you don't care about the people who simply know things you just look at them because they don't understand what they know so he shook the head and smiled and asked he asked me if he had to ask the doctor because the doctor was mad he said Why do you have to come moto kai? Has anyone ever has he ever given the car to any mechanic? And the guy at first he said no, of course it was a new car. But then he told him that the problem is with the start. It cannot start. The guy at first refused, but he told we, we convinced him that the, he has the toolbox is not going to take it. Let him check from here. later he accepted went into the car and removed the starter on removing that small machine he realized that they had removed a new one and put an old one his own mechanics on opening it, uh, it it could not start because i don't know how i can call it in english amanyo eh eh gari te gakwata could just uh, it couldn't hold the thing that is supposed to start the car they sold the new one the original one and put in an old one that is when the guy got shocked he trusted his mechanic then he asked the boy how much do we need he, he said just get for me 350000 shillings doctor put his hand in his jacket he got 500000 shillings and asked can you do it like tonight and i get my car he said okay let me call some people in uh, in Chesedka. and see if I can, I can find them took a border but then on getting the money because i'm a student of life i realized that the doctor had a, had a phd he knew his car so well he could even drive it but he didn't know how his car he didn't understand how his car operates that's why he got confused then the boy that has no books understood could have not known the come more but he understood how it operates then i realized that in life those that have understanding will eat man of those that know so i say to myself no i should look for understanding because understanding is more valuable than just knowing from centenary bank and even our life after the night bank can be great because let me tell you branches all over that are spread all over the country have challenges i mean you sit in centenary bank at ruvaga there is a long line someone goes there at 9 a.m and they leave at 5 without even being worked on the people there or the people in those branches don't even feel the courtesy to come at least every after an hour to say something to the people that are seated don't take these people for granted you know somehow somewhere someone comes down when you, we are so sorry we are trying to work so hard as much as we can to make sure that none of you lives here without his or problem being solved that only tells this person that yes these people respect me Why don't you become a consultant in those trainings after centenary bank? 
you offer your proposal to the people in charge and you tell them, I'm going to traverse the entire nation. Preparing Centenary Bank employees to be more efficient and to understand their work. There is money after that. She's going to pay me some good money. And she's going to give me an amount that some people work for for 30 days. Why? Isn't the world fair? Of course she's not paying me much money worth what I'm sharing. But again, it is okay because someone else goes to work for 31 days or 30 days to get that amount. I'm supposed to get it in one hour or two hours. What does it imply? It implies that when you understand what you know, you can, already, you can use it to make a difference. And when you make a difference, as we shall see on the concept of the seed, where success is hidden or greatness is hidden, you will be able to live a better life. So what is the truth? All humans are the same. All humanity is searching for the same thing. All of humanity is looking for the same answers to the same questions. The difference is the root and systems will evolve and implement in the search. However, the root, the root also is not, imp, uh, is not important, but rather whether you know the best. I always tell, I share with my, with my colleagues that I work with that actually have helped so much to change their mindset. You don't see a person that has come into an organization and you see them as, a compet as competitors. People who fight each other at work they are so myopic in thinking that they don't know who they are. When I come to Centenary Bank, let me tell you, none of you can walk my path. That's why I cannot fight any. Why? I can't be you, you can't be me. The moment you find out that, you look at other people as colleagues, not as competitors. But what you find in organization, people are looking at themselves as competitors. That is why they are in their fights, they even affect the company. Why? Because they're not empowered. When you're empowered, you always look at other people as people in their own path, and you're in your own. And none can be you. These things have taken people's money. They do witchcraft. They do lots and lots of things. Others pray so much. Why? Because they think someone else. And let me tell you, it is true by the way. Uganda first, we have, right now we have over 256,000 professionals languishing on the streets of Kampala, looking for jobs that do not exist, or those that exist, offer more exploitation than much than, than much pay. Someone else is praying in Bukarango, another one is somewhere, someone else is in a hut somewhere, wanting your job. Play with it. But what gives you security is not the witchcraft or the prayers. No, it is your efficiency, and efficiency is a sign of a gift. If we go deep into uh, the psychological contract versus the legal contract, you can know that the psychological contract is much more important than the legal contract. If your boss doesn't sign a psychological contract with you, even if you have an appointment, go to court, you lose the job. That means you can't offer what they expect of you. And what they expect of you, 99% of the times, it is not included in your appointment rate. Because the appointment says you're going to do A, B, C, D to get this amount. But they never tell you, we expect you to be, to be here at 6, to live at 10. To, they expect you to do lots of things that are never put in the appointment. But that would be for managers if you like to talk about the psychological contract. So what is the key to happiness? The key to true happiness is finding your work. The word work is the word Oregon, which means to become, to manifest, to fulfill or to reveal. When you tell a mango seed work, you're telling a mango seed to grow into a tree and bear the fruits. So what is your work here? Don't tell me you're a manager. 
you know I'm a manager in charge of what is your work? Because you can think that is your work, but when it's just your job, can you do that work elsewhere? Or can you do that work when you're not paid? No. If you realize that you can't do it when you're not paid, that is not your work, that is your job. Even if I come here at Central Bank and you disappoint me and you don't pay me, I never get angry. Why? Because I love what I do. I don't judge a day by how much I've harvested, but by how many seeds I've planted. I'm planting a seed. So a seed to me is much more important than the amount of money you can give me. Actually, you can't pay a gift. You can't hire a gift. Madam, you can't hire a gift. When I tell you give me five millions, I'm not... But that's not, uh, it's not blasphemy, it's not. But I'm not bragging. I'm just telling you that I've spent some years investing in myself. So what I'm going to offer is worth. You can bring a professor here and they cannot tell you what I'm telling you. I'm very confident about that. The only things they will tell you are the, about the books and the things you can research and read for yourself on the internet. But what is understanding? That is why the guy is paid a billion shilling a week. Messi. He's paid a billion shilling a week without even those other monies he gets from other things. A billion shilling a, w- a week. Even the President of the United States doesn't get that money. In a trillion dollar economy, he cannot get that money. Why? There is nothing that pays in life like find out who you are. I'm not here because of books. I'm here because of who I am. For the time being, or for the times, for the few months or years that you're inside here, use them efficiently and effectively. To prepare for yourself when you move out. What are you going to be doing? Some students at MOBS doing banking. What do they even know about banking? They need someone from Centenary Bank who is interested in that to go there and tell them about banking and be paid. But if you don't choose to be that, it means you'll be there, like so many other people. So people move from morning to evening in Kampala every day. But in the evening, if you get them, they haven't done anything. You can even spend 20 years at Centenary Bank, and you live without... That is a problem if you do. In the beginning, God told Adam, work, meaning become. If you told that seed to become, it would become. So God has hidden in every person and all some vision they are supposed to become. People don't go to work, they manifest to work. Our work is what we are carrying now that we are born to bring to this generation. That's why your job is temporary and it frustrates you. And let me, by the way, this is a secret. I can, let me even reduce on the voice. 80% of people are frustrated by what they do. Even here. If they had an option not to come but get the money, they would be at work, they'd be at home in their beds. But these are the things of life, fees, life, live, eat, force them out of bed. People leave work late out of frustration they go back home with when they they just don't want they don't even want to have a conversation with their partners because i mean there are lots of things that are needed home but they cannot offer why the guy is planning for fees children are going back to school and the woman is talking about pampers and and food pretend so they go back late when the people all the people are tired the children are in bed the woman is also tired uh, can i give you food no i don't want they go take, take a shower, they go to bed. And in the morning they leave. Not because they don't have the sleep. 
but the sleep inside of them is still inside of them. But they have no choice, they have to leave. If they're not driving, they maneuver their way to the main road, they sit in taxis with people who don't even smell good, who don't know, they don't even know what they were doing the entire night. They endure that, sit in traffic, persevere to be at work by two, to sit in an organization they hate, to do the work they don't like, but they have no option. You find someone looking at you with a very tough face and you ask yourself, why? Have you done any problem? No! He just said everyone. But I mean, they don't have an option. They have to be here. So, in the days of our great-great-grandfathers, people used to be taken to slaves by force. Today we take our slaves into slavery by force. We force ourselves into slavery. Don't you see young people running to Dubai? I did some advanced training at Dubai Men's College and I used to see lots of young Ugandans there. How can someone leave their country to go and work for 700,000 shillings a month? 700,000 shillings. That's not peace. That's force. Even some of us are forced to come to my parents' house every day. But if we had an option, we wouldn't. So, Work is not something you do, but rather what you become. Therefore, work is your purpose. And it is the original reason why we were born. What, the reason why I've started with this, I wanted us to open up to the reality of life. And this is the beginning. If you find your purpose, this is the beginning of your life after your job. Some are planning to uh, to build rental, sit there and basorose every month. Some are planning to start a shop, but that's also that is all stress. If you don't know your purpose, you'll be stressed after the end of your life. Then you have a mind and you have a spirit. The spirit, the, the mind believes in facts. The spirit believes in the truth. And the spirit does whatever it does, based on the truth. The mind does whatever it does, based on the facts. The fact is I'm, I'm in Centenary Bank, but the truth is I'm not part of Centenary Bank. I just have accounts in Centenary Bank. So you see that facts are temporary, but the truth will always be true. So people who move by their facts, they never do anything in life. That is why people are told never to move by sight, to move on, basing on sight, but by faith. Faith is an equivalence of truth. Truth is what your spirit knows. And let me tell you, your religious man was supposed to tell you that deep inside your spirit, the realm of your spirit, when you're alone, seated somewhere in a quiet environment, your spirit has kept on telling you something to do. The whites call it a calling because the spirit keeps on calling you to do something. The spirit knows exactly why you exist. But your mind has always been fighting it. The spirit tells you to do something, the mind tells you no. Look at yourself. Look at your bank account. I mean look at the responsibility that you have. You can't do that. Why? Because the mind is naturally a factual, a factual organ. It interprets life by the facts around you. But the spirit believes, and let me tell you, none of the great people in the world have done great things believing in their minds. They followed their spirits. Read their biographies. The Gandhis, the Martin Luthers, even this guy, Obama. When you read Dreams for My Father, or Death of Hope, he's talking about one thing, something that believed in, he believed in. That's why in public speaking, you're told not to labor much to Persuade people believe what you believe, but make people feel what you feel. They will understand you. He never persuaded anyone to believe in him. He made them feel what he felt. They understood him automatically. We must find who we are. A mango seed was created to become a mango tree. A bird created to fly. A fish created to swim. You and I were created for something. And honestly speaking, that's your life after here. 
You're going to be taken through lots of programs. You'll visit different places. You'll be talked to by different people. But everything that you're going to do after here, if it didn't have a foundation, it will be useless and meaningless. You can go to a farm, but if you don't know who you are, it will be like a wastage of time. That is why I'm so glad that you gave me an opportunity to be the first person in your program. Why? It is the foundation of, understanding is the foundation of everything. If you don't know who you want, what you want, everything around you is meaningless. But when you know yourself, you will know what you want, who to talk to, where to go, and what to do. I have to be great in this country, not even in this country. In Africa, I have to be great, and everyone in the world must know me. But I know that I need lots and lots of testimonies. Because your success is not determined by how much you have amassed, how much wealth you've amassed, but how many people whose lives have changed because of your contribution. That is why I move every day deep in the villages to help people believe in themselves and start something. In Kampala, when you look at people, you think they know what they want, but go deep in the villages. People are struggling, not because they are unfortunate, but they are too ignorant that anyone from anywhere can use them. Ignorance is non excuse you know that. Ignorance is no plea. The reason why I go deep in the villages and build in testimonies, I want my life to be relevant for the people's existence. That's why your businesses are failing and that's why life frustrates you no matter how much you earn as a seller. When I got my first degree, when I got my first job, I was earning 450,000 shillings. I applied to another job, they gave me 650. I looked for another job that could give me a million shillings. Young Empowered and Health. We started Young Empowered and Health. We designed the campaign to be a man, true manhood, something for something love. I joined German Foundation for the Population. They gave me a million shillings. I went to save the children. They gave me more money. I worked with Straight Talk Foundation. They gave me more money. I went to Windsor Development Consultant thinking that my thirst for money would be quenched by more money. Until when I realized that it is not how much you earn, but how well you plan for what you earn to get what you want from it. God is not a wasteful God. When He gives you two million shillings, he gives you challenges of 5 million shillings. He's not wasteful. He makes sure that you can't save, you can only save out of pain. But remember, saving is first reduction in consumption. There are those people that have been fighting like me. When they get a million shillings, they fight for 1.5. When they get 1.5, they, they fight for 2. You'll never be satisfied with money. You get two. Your challenges are doubled to make sure that you can only fit in that money. You can't waste it. So, at the end of the day, it is not how much you earn, but what do you want out of that which you earn? That is the challenge that is disturbing and frustrating all those young people working down there. They rely on a salary, they rely on security in Senate Bank. No, our economy is being hit. You bank has been true to us. We are losing. Which means people must be helped. But people are not willing to pay for understanding. Someone can pay for a cheap book of 200,000 shillings, but they can't buy a, a book of 20,000 shillings. Why? Because we, people with this skin, hate understanding. I interacted with, with a lady in Makere University. She prides to have worked there for, the, for, for, for 26 years, cleaning the library and putting the books in order. But she has never read any book. She doesn't even know what is in any, any of the books in the library.
Some people go back to school. They graduated 10 years ago. They have never read a book. They don't read newspapers. They don't do research. They think that old understanding could apply to the new understanding. That is what is, that is, what is killing organizations. So the bitter truth is, a job is a short-term solution to a long-term problem. A job never solves anything, but it is a platform. It gives you an opportunity to work on something. If I give you these notes and I just, I just give you the notes and go, they might not make any meaning. So it is a short-term solution to a long-term problem. Why is it important to find your work? Work is the source of your vision. Why vision is the beginning of your life's purpose and purpose is your only business here on earth. When you find yourself, you can even know which business to start. If I'm to go into agriculture, I'll go into it because I want to have enough food at home. I'm not going to go into commercial agriculture. That's not my business. I wasn't born for that. I was born for this. If I'm, start, if I'm to start any business, this is the business why I exist on earth. And let me tell you, it can pay me. Then I can use the proceeds from the business to buy more land, practice agriculture, and more husbandry, and lots and lots of other things. I can even construct rentals. But that's not my purpose. This is my business. When you find your purpose, you know which business you are created to start. Not everyone was born to be a farmer. Even if you try as much as you can, you'll be frustrated and disappointed. And at the end of the day, you run away from farming, telling everyone it doesn't work. I can't be everything. I'm one thing. And that which I am will create way even in the great seas of the world that is why i never lose hope you can't do anything and frustrate me you can't disappoint me in my life no i can only be amused by what you do i'm only amused by what people do but i can't be frustrated why because i have a source of hope that never dries i found who i am Proverbs 19, men are the plans of man, men are the plans in a man's heart, but the Lord's plan will prevail. God's purpose is more important than your plans. In other words, purpose precedes plan. You were born because of a purpose. For there was something God wanted done that made you necessary. You're not going, uh, you're, not, you're not here as an experiment. You're here as an assignment. The challenge is that for almost half of your lifetime, you have been made to see your job as your destiny. You must start your work when you still have your job. The job prepares you for your work. And you were never supposed to die on your job. That is why you people go. Yes. Give way. Let me tell you. Give way to young, smart people that are there. You're fighting them. You're seated on their talents, their gifts. They can't exercise their power. Why? Because you're seated in that position. Go, for God's sake. Leave. Uh. Live in peace. Why is it that when you go to the church and the priest says, live in peace, you leave? Don't fear retirement. Don't fear going. Going is an opportunity for you to start your life. Some of you it is becoming more late and late every day that you're here. Write your boss even before retirement. They'll give you your package. Go and start your life as early as possible. Yes, experience is the best teacher. Use that experience. The greatest gift you can give to Centenary Bank is your own crown. That is why the greatest act of leadership is mentorship. Why? Because it is not important to know how, how you're going to stay. It is much more important to know how you're going to live. That is why the guy said, if I live, you shall do greater works than I. He was the greatest leader of all time. The leader believes. 
you're not called upon to stay in your positions. You're called upon to mentor someone else, to take over after you've gone. That someone will be better than you. Why? Because you find them that are different from you, then you pour yourself into them. People don't want others to learn. You know, sometimes people are even forced to go to leave. They go, they want to leave organizations and they die. Then they go outside there and they brag around. You know, when I was there, things were moving. Now you can see. They, when, you, when your successor fails, you have failed as a person. Because you refuse to mentor someone. Jesus spent three years moving, doing things before these men, mentoring them to take over. That is why he told them, for what you know right now, if I go, you'll do greater works than I. That is the true spirit of a leader. But someone is seated in a position, doesn't want to leave. Find someone in the bank, in your branch. Identify those smart young people. Begin to move with them. Begin to show them what you've been doing. Take them back to school. Encourage them to go back to school if that position requires you to have a master's degree. Let them go back. When you're leaving, recommend them. You don't know what it means going back to an organization when almost 90% of people that are there, they went through your hands. That is pride. But people don't want that. Jobs are just spots, and spots on earth are temporary. And if you base on your position to look like a valuable person, better lose your position. Value doesn't come from your position. Value comes from who you are. You must start your work when you still have a job. So, I want to leave you with a few questions, the four fundamental questions. My prayer is that you can use the remaining days of your time here and trying to find answers. For if you fail in this first session, all other beautiful initiatives won't make much meaning. Let me tell you, if you fail to find meaning in this first session, all other initiatives that the, the bank is going to prepare for you, to, uh, in a way of preparing you to prepare for your life, they won't make any meaning. What, what will make meaning is the money, the package will be given. So there are so many challenges facing us today, but I don't, I didn't come here with many questions, with many answers. I instead came with questions. No one will ever teach you the practical way of starting without you first answering the critical questions of life. Be it any rich or wealth man you know of, all the subjects. We are told. I therefore come here today with more questions than answers. I believe if we can find answers together, our lives will be different. The imagination is the beginning of creation. George Bernard Shaw. To imagine what you desire, you will what you imagine, and at last you create what you will. This is hidden in the foundation of our presentations. So the first question I leave you with is, Define who you are. In the remaining time here, I want you to ask yourself something that you have been running away from all your entire life. They say he who absconds from all lives to fight another day. You can't postpone what is inevitable. You can't postpone death. My dear, you will die. I'm not a prophet of doom, but you will die. You can't postpone it. So the earlier you know, the better you begin to plan for your death. You can even plan, you can even write how your death will be. Write about it so that people follow a manual during your death. So define who you are. What defines you? What are your gifts? What is that something that you've seated on your entire time? Postpone, you have kept on postponing. There is a small voice inside your body or inside your spirit that has been telling you to do something, but you have kept on postponing what, you have, what you're supposed to do. There is no right time for anything. The time is always right to do what is right. The time is always right to do what is right. And let me tell you, the best way to begin is to start 
and the best day to start is today and the best time to start is now you have i'm sure 10 years ago you sat with people here or five years ago and they're no more time to start is now you guys stop thinking that you're going to die here in fact the company must retire you early to avoid the problems you know when you die on work it's in the bank has to buy the coffee they have to do everything they have to be there no they should you should retire these people early. So what is your passion? What consumes most of your time? Eight to five is not your time. Five to ten is what defines who you're going to be. What do people do from five to ten? They're running back to work through traffic. They reach, they reach home late. They don't even have time to think. And let me tell you, when you're employed, you don't even have time to think. Unless you're good enough to create for yourself time to think. Because every time you're thinking of results, targets, reports, presentations. Because what keeps you at work, there are those reports, there are those things that you do. Find time alone over the weekend. Go somewhere. We have a beautiful place in Nabinonia. Sit somewhere, enter a forest, get your mat and sit there and reflect upon your life and ask yourself some of these most important questions. This acts as a compass of your life. When you find, you, you know, I wake up knowing what I'm supposed to do, who I'm supposed to talk to. I know what I'm supposed to do to become the person I want to be. I'm not in a rush, but every day I have to do something because I have the compass of my life. I know my direction. You can't drive me into something that is not part of, your, part of my life. When I realize that what you're driving me into doesn't benefit me at all, I just go. That's why sometimes we are even called upon for money. For money, to do some things. But you can't eat their money. You know that their money is going to come back in a different way. When you know who you are, you know who to talk to and who to associate with. So we shape the world, not, not the world to shape us. And in the end, you spend your entire life helping others to reach their dreams. How can you help so many employees in this bank and even outside there to reach their dreams? We look at the concept of a seed. The second question is, what do you want? You can't want everything. And you can never grow beyond your understanding. That's why we say the state of your life is nothing more than a reflection of the state of your mind. You cannot create what you cannot imagine. Everything that we are even being here, everything that we are started from here. So that means, if you are able to imagine being in Central Bank and you're here, you should be able to imagine being somewhere else. You should imagine being out of this bank to get your peace. Here you don't have peace. That is the truth. You're a slave. And Kasayo managers don't want to hear this. Those are the people at least. But a good company helps their employees to succeed. When they, are, when, they are, when they succeed, they help the company to grow. Around 45, they, lo they lost their jobs. They went back home. They were staying in the same apartment in the US. They lost their jobs. They tried for four months looking for jobs, dropping their papers everywhere, and they were telling them they can't be employed. They are old, they have grown up, they wanted more young people. They were disappointed until one of them gave up, looked for his other unemployed friends, they started drinking, spending time, talking, negativity. Then one man, one man kept on going, kept on searching, 
He was frustrated, disappointed, but he never stopped. He kept on going and looking for jobs. Until when he realized that he had been disappointed so much to the extent that he had even started losing the hope. Then he found a company and, and said, I want to do work for free. I want to work here for free. I want to be a volunteer. They told him, we are not going to give you anything. We are not give you, giving you anything. He said, yes. This guy started working as a volunteer. He was always the first at the workplace and was always the last. He could be sent and be directed to by so many other people in the company and he accepted. After a few months, being the first and last, being active, being effective and efficient in what he was doing, one of the managers quit. The management sat to look for a replacement. And guess who? They selected this other guy. What was the difference between the two? Eyesight and mindsight. The other guy gave up, believing that there are no jobs. Even right now you find people saying there are no jobs. But let me tell you, the world is looking for smart people. And space at the top of the mountain is still empty. This country has few Fabians, Kasekendes. They are few. You can't tell me that he's going to retire from Centenary Bank and he fails to get a job in World Bank. The, the world is looking to support and like give everything to those people who have moved an extra step from where the world is. Eyesight is interpreting things the way they are. Mindsight is keeping on believing in that deepest faith. The leading barrier to economic empowerment is thinking that you can get what you want from anywhere. People are so intelligent enough when they see a word kitchen. They don't go there to P.O. for a short call. They know that what takes place there is food, even those that are not going to school. But they are so ignorant when it comes to what they want. They think they can get it from anywhere. This has forced children of our generation to sell their bodies. They have tried so many things and they have been frustrated. So they do whatever comes their way. You all know, you, you have children that have grown up, you all know that our generation is a mess. Why you are looking for money all the time instead of being home to nurture your kids. In fact, let me tell you, the reason why even women work is because men have refused to take over their responsibility. I mean, you have had a child. Why would you leave your baby three months and go back to work? It is inhuman. This, but the, the greatest gift you can give to that baby is your entire time and the breast milk. Children begin to drink animal milk when they are when they are two weeks, three weeks. Why? Money. Money. When a man finds their purpose, their vision, they share with the woman. The woman shares with the kids. And even when the kids are young, they start telling the, the father that, Dad, when I grow up, I'm going to go ABCD to help you. Why? Because your dream became their dream. The challenge is we have husbands that don't have dreams. The Bible says, let us create man in our own image and likeness. Man doesn't mean a male figure. The Hebrew word for man is I-S-H, ish, ish. It means the spirit. That is why in science of primary, they used to refer to man and woman as man. Man is a living animal. They, they, they always incorporated the female and male. Let us create man. But the first body created was for a male. When it came to women, women were never created. They were made. That's why he said, let us make him a helper. Making it means you're using what is existing, what is existing to bring something new. They were made. That is why they look different from us. For us, we are fingerless, we are there, we are useless. 
why because we are created but these ones were made so they took their time to make them to equip them to equip them with whatever you need to become what you want that is why they say they are helpers if i want to 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 carry this table the first thing i do i must know that it is the table that i want to carry so i'll try even to lift it alone Half, after knowing the, its weight i begin to look for someone to help me with the table but i use two principles the first principle is i either look, look for someone who is as strong as me or when i find someone who is stronger that is an advantage what do men do in this generation they look for people they can't stand for weak this helper must find you already knowing what you want them to do for you to get where you want that is the vision that is your purpose so if you don't know your purpose you wake up in the morning the woman goes to work the man goes to work when will the family ever come together to think of one thing to grow and nurture these babies and give them an example you can't i mean a woman is a see or somewhere a man is a see or somewhere when do they get, who nurtures the kids the maids and internet and internet so where uh, that which you want where can you find it who you are what do you want where is it the first question is what price must you pay to get it can you imagine sometimes it amuses me some of us believe that God gave him soul that is what came from heaven and got into a body and became a human we all believe that and in fact by the way it is true why because they say unto you a child is born and the son given why is it different the son is different from the child unto you a child is given and the son given unto you a child is born and the son given the child will be named Jesus the son Emmanuel him that is in man spirit a spirit in the body Yeah, that is the man you want. For you, you say God is with us. Him, in, man, spirit. So the spirit came into the body, and God himself came into a body and lived life of human, beaten, struggled. But I ask myself, why would this, someone called the son of God suffer when the guy himself has all the power? carries his own cross goes to go, uh, to to the mountain crucified hung up why he was telling humans that there is nothing you're going to get for free people expect a miracle which he told but after picking it what he told them you must know how to get it in reality after picking it in spirit so He paid a price for what he wanted. Who tells you that you're going to pray in his name and you're going to pray a prayer? Who told you? Some people say opportunity is when preparation comes across and opportunity. That is luck. Luck is when preparation meets opportunity. You've been preparing for something the entire life and you find it when you're ready. what price must you pay to get what you want some you you might realize that you have to leave the bank as early as possible that, that is the price you have to pay you know that to become what you want so if you don't end up wandering around spending much time life is like a supermarket you've been to dubai there is what they call dubai mall when you enter from this side you can't move out from that side you get lost because the thing is too huge So the rule is before you get inside if you're not a visitor or a tourist you must know what you want and on which floor it is. So when you enter you ask the people that work there to direct you to where you can find what you want. They will direct you when you go there pick it. Go pay, move out. That is life. That is that is life. But if you don't and you enter with your small money and you only wanted to spend like 1000 dirham 
you might end up spending all your money without even getting what you wanted in the beginning. Because whatever you come across will interest you. So life is about knowing exactly if it is soap, what type of soap do you want? When you enter supermarket, ask those young girls, where is the shelf for soaps? Go pick it, come back to the counter, pay, move out. That is life. But if you keep on wandering around, you're going to spend much more than what you planned. Life is no time to waste. You must know exactly what you want. Why you're living, my brother, my father? Why you're living? Because if you don't, you end up, you're going to end up doing lots and lots of things that don't even add value on you. So what sacrifices must you do to get what you want? If it is money, how much do you need to start to do? And let me tell you, don't ask people what you want to start. I always encourage people not to. Because no one knows what you want to start. Even business consultants can only help you to guide you on doing what you already want. But they can't find for you what you want. For if they do, you must have a lot of money. A lot of money to use other people to do it for you. That is why rich people use money to work for them. They just look for smart people. People who can do things on their behalf. They pay them well, they do the business and it becomes their business. If you're not like that, the idea must be yours. Last question is, that which you want, when you want it, a goal is a dream with a deadline. A gazelle wakes up knowing that it must outrun the fastest lion or it gets killed. In the same jungles of Africa, a lion knows that it must outrun the slowest gazelle or it starves to death. Meaning that when the sun rises, all animals begin to run. I don't care who you are, where you come from, how much you have on your account, and how many properties you do have. I don't care. Because all of us are, are still in the race. 